Now, I'm going to share know your guest interests. So knowing your audience, know your guest interests is very important. And I have some personal experience of my client interests and I'm going to share them with you. Their first thing is history. A lot of people when they visit Taiwan, they're really interesting about our history. And because I'm also kind of like history lover, I like to read history book and then know some of our famous general biographic. So I can share that with them. And I really think that can really help you when you're doing your touring because some of the history information can have a very strong message to share with your audience. And history is such a big variety that inside you can have interesting people, you can have an event background, you can actually know more about different international relationship. So let me make an example for you. There was a group tour and I'm taking them to a, a city called Tainan and in Tainan my client told me she used to live there and then I asked her why or, or I, how come I saw you were the first time visiting here she said no I've been here before my dad is a pilot and at that time Taiwan have US Air Force basing in Tainan and that's why she lived there when she was a teenager so I tried to share with them like oh at that time it must be very very stressful like I can understand like our relationship with the common China is very tense they must have a lot of different exercise and people are worried and then maybe we were being afraid that there are going to be some kind of like a war or something and propaganda is all the time and so because I know a little bit about our history so I can share and create a nice conversation with this old lady. And I think a lot of your client will really want to know your country history. And history is not just a big, big picture. You can elaborate that to your own personal history. There is also one example. One time I'm driving my client to some lake and then we we're kind of like having a nice conversation and suddenly they try to ask me like oh, so Ty tell me more about yourself and then I started to tell them about my kindergarten my elementary school my junior high school my university life and then why I become a tour guide today so the history is not just about like your country so you can talk about your own history like how many girlfriends do you have? How many boyfriends do you have? This type of personal information, if you are willing to share, that can be your personal history as well. So history, I think this is really a good interest for many, many people. And secondly, is food. A lot of people now will call themselves as a foodie person. Here, you see, I'm also a foodie person. Food can create memory and food can also create connection. A lot of people really like to try different local food. And if you can share that interest with them, you can definitely make friends with them because you are the local guy. You suppose to know some really good, nice place. And for me, I think this is one of your advantage. If you can try to develop some of the food map of your own country or of your own town and then every time when you're doing the tour you can put that information in your tour and all the people from my experience all the people will be very interesting of that because they don't know your country that much they don't know this city that much and the local guy is their information source and when they are friend with you and you share some of your childhood street foods, they will really love you. So know uh, some of the food is also a very important thing. 
and next taking photos nowadays every tour require photo taken so sometimes using just using iPhone or any type of smartphone as will be enough just try to take some nice photo and as a guide I think taking good photo can also help you develop, develop good relationship with your client this is after you taking them to a nice place and then you tell them the story and the information you want to share with them and now you help them take a really nice photo ask them to stand in the right position and then show them what you have did for them this is really really an amazing memory that you're creating for them so taking photos is something I think you can start practicing and also this is a way that create good memories so now let's go into action what does that mean we're start preparing a tour so the first thing is before the tour what should you do anybody think of anything I will let you have some time thinking okay so before the tour what should I do how can I prepare so many different story and then share with them how can I organize the idea I have in my head and then share with my client this is something you should do so take note read book and actually write down what you want to say to them this is something you really need to be doing it because you have to a lot of practice like Taiwan is not big but we have so many different cities we have different good restaurants, and every restaurant have their own brand story and this type of story is something I need to write it down I need to write down what time they open what is their famous dishes and why people love this restaurant this is the detailed information so you can start to collect information in any um, ways you can start collecting it from internet you can start collecting from asking your friend you can start collecting by reading book these are all the information um, way to start to build your own database so before the tour this is exactly what you should do study study and study more and you can be a very very like fluent guy when you're doing the tour because you know all that in your head and next this is during the tour maybe you might forget what I say before but now it's time to think about okay during the tour what should I do what is the three thing you should do eye contact body language make key point the thing you shouldn't do don't look that way don't have sidebar conversation and then also speak up so these are all the things you should do to be a professional guide to have some visual effect like this man holding in his hand to ask him to see this and then having a nice body language look at your audience and then share the information in your head this is a picture for me like I think oh he's a professional tour guide he know what he's doing and I really hope after you listen to the information I'm sharing with you you can start to have this type of picture okay I want to be like this man I want to do this type of tour I want to share something with my client and this is something I think is really really important and after a tour it's about time for review no one is expert in the very beginning so review it is very 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 important every time after you finish your tour you should have time sit down enjoy a cup of wine or a cup of tea and then start to think about okay what mistake do I make today do I speak up do I do, do I contact and then do I make a key point and also think about the message you try to tell your audience did you get that through to your audience if it's you are an awesome guy if not don't worry 
just keep on practicing it. In one day, you will be the professional tour guide. So by doing preparation, and then remember some of the key point during the tour, and then review in the end, this is the method, this is the guiding basis that you can really, really train yourself to become a professional tour guide. So now, I will ask you to do some of the case study. Yes. This is Taipei 101. And so I would like to invite you to Google it. Google Taipei 101. Google some different information about it. And also make down some notes. Right now, I hope you can start thinking, okay, I'm going to be a Taipei guide and try to introduce client Taipei 101. I'm going to write down something. And then I'm going to deliver it to the audience. And by trying to do this, I hope you can understand how the message I'm trying to explain to you. And so now, I'm going to um, picture you as my audience, and I'm your guide, and I have done my research before, and I'm going to share with you. So everyone here is Taipei 101. And this is the tallest building in Taipei City. They also have the fastest elevator in the world still inside this building. It called 101 because it had one floor height. And also, it can uh, see it as like a Chinese bamboo. This is actually the shape of it. So the main building is all business tower, it's all different company inside different buildings. And down there, there is a mall. And in the mall, there's one of the most famous restaurants in Taipei as well. It's called the Ding Taifeng Restaurant. The Ding Taifeng Restaurant have served an amazing dish called Xiao Rong Bao. It's called a juicy dumpling and it's made with pork. And the juice come up with all the amazing time of um, sense in your mouth, it just burst. It's amazing. 101 is kind of like the soul of Taipei. In every angle, Taipei people can see Taipei 101. And it also have a very interesting uh, structures because Taiwan is an island. We also suffer from typhoon. So to Build it like a bamboo can really help Taipei 101 maintain the strong wind that the typhoon create. And up there, they have a 660-ton um, ball. It's a steel ball. They will balance the whole um, building. So when you're inside that building, you will see it like going here or in there. The floor height of Taipei 101 is 508 meters high. And this is a must-visit tourist destination in Taipei. So I really hope you enjoy what I've shared with you about Taipei 101. And I also hope you can spend some time and try to like um, study and then write down your own brief introduction about Taipei 101 right now and share it with your neighbors, like uh, the one sitting over here or that one sitting here. Try to share with them because as a guide, you really need to say it out loud. You have to speak it out. It's not like writing an article. It's about verbally uh, speaking out with your body language, with your eyes contact, and then make some key point during the tour. So now I have a time for you for Q&A. And later, I'm going to give you some of the question and also some of the answer too.